over the last six, seven years. Trade has, relative to the size of trade, relative to world GDP, world output, has stopped rising. Uh, it had risen for m most of the previous 30, 35 years. It's now essentially stagnant. Most recently, trade has stopped growing. Uh, the, in terms of volume, it's not just price falls. Uh, the stock of cross-border financial assets, this huge expansion in financial assets, has been shrinking relative to world GDP since the financial crisis, since 2007. Foreign direct investment inflows and outflows has, has been falling somewhat relative to world GDP. So these, on these fundamental and basic measures, we are seeing globalization stagnate. And in addition, liberalization has stopped. In fact, uh, trade liberalization has basically stopped. Uh, there's no, the Doha round of multilateral trade negotiations has failed. Other negotiations are not going anywhere. Financial sector is being regulated again. Uh, there's increased xenophobia and hostility to trade and capital flows. So on both sides, actual commerce, actual exchange and policy, globalization has at least plateaued. States did it because they believed it would help the welfare of their people. And on average, I think there's no doubt this is true. You just have to compare West Germany with closed East Germany or South Korea with closed North Korea. But of course, once you open up, you create increasingly, particularly with finance, global capitalism, global capital and global business. And they start operating in the interstices between the states and they can play states one against the other. For a very big and powerful state like the US, it could in theory control this. There's no doubt there are political problems, but they're inside the US that makes it difficult. But for individual European nations, it's much more difficult. And that is why I actually believe, and one of the reasons I thought Brexit was a terrible mistake, is we do need to cooperate. By cooperation, particularly on issues like tax, financial regulation, uh, things of that kind, we can gain more of the benefits of trade and while cushioning and trade and globalization and cushion uh, our people against the downsides. There are trade-offs. Everything in life is trade-offs. It gives you potential for more prosperity, for more opportunity for people. There will be losses, which can be cushioned, I think, and, and uh, Scandinavian welfare states have shown how to do this. Uh, it is positive, but the consequences have to be managed. It's clear globalization is a big historical process, you can go back many centuries, uh, is driven by two things. Political decisions, which provide jurisdictional integration, which provide the possibility of trading relatively easy across frontiers, reduction in trade barriers, uh, stable property rights, things like that, and technological opportunities. You, you can't have trade without the ability to transport goods and without communications. It's clear transport and communications, above all communications technology, less so transport, has been strongly positive for globalization. It's one of the drivers of globalization. But I remain of the view, and this is a big debate, that it wouldn't have happened without policy decisions as well. And if governments really, really want to close it down, they can close quite a bit of it down. They can't close everything. You know, if you can communicate with just a switch and, uh, and just pressing a keyboard key and it gets across the world, it's difficult to close this down. But the Chinese have shown you can control even the internet pretty well if you want to.